Okay, let's talk about the GACE Middle Grades Mathematics Assessment Exam. And if you're watching this video, I assume that you are going to be taking this um, assessment. And of course, uh, you probably very also very well know that it's for the state of Georgia and it's uh, your certification exam to teach uh, middle grade uh, middle grades mathematics. So, you know, that can um, cover a wide uh, range of spectrums. You're talking, um, you know, from kind of your middle school math, uh, arithmetic, pre-algebra, could be um, algebra one as well. All depends on your school. Um, but you certainly um, need to be ready to be able to teach those level of courses. So a little bit about me. I'm a math teacher. I taught uh, middle school, high school math, and even some college. So I have a degree in mathematics, and I've been through these assessments. I have um, did not take the GACE exam, I took the Praxis for the state that I taught in, but I certainly understand what it's like to take these certification exams. I will say uh, one thing, uh, irrespective of where you think you are in mathematics, like, well, yeah, if you're good or you have good background, you still need to review. These are professional exam certifications, and um, as they should be, so, you know, nothing's going to be, like, given away for you, like, just, you know, here it is, real easy test, yeah, because you know how to do some algebra. That's uh, that's not going to work. I know um, for the Praxis exam I took to teach high school mathematics, if I'm not mistaken, the failure rate was like 50% um, on, on for those that took the test the first time. So it's a kind of a wake-up call, right? So the people that walk out of the test that didn't make it, um, you don't know that obviously until you get your exam scores back, but then they're like, wow, if I would only study harder. So it's, you know, you don't want to be wasting your time or money on it. So do the right thing. If you like my teaching style, I have a great um, GACE middle grades mathematics assessment test prep course, very comprehensive. I'll leave a, the link uh, in the description of this video if you want to check that out. But what I got here is a little practice problem that you definitely would need to be able to kind of be at the level of of skill to be able to solve. So if you want to try to give this a whirl, maybe you want to pause the video and, and try to solve this, kind of just see if you can do it. And then obviously I'm going to go through it. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Well, this is a system, okay? A system, and this is absolutely something that you need to um, be an expert at to teach you know, middle school mathematics. Remember, uh, pre-algebra, algebra one, you know, these are courses are uh, definitely taught in middle school. Now, Algebra 1, not as much, but you can definitely end up teaching Algebra 1, depending on if you have, like, honors level students. So, you know, you need to have a mastery of the, the, the topics, not just for you to be like, oh, I can do the problems. That's not good enough as a teacher. You know, you have to have a mastery of it. So what is a system? Okay, what? how would you even think about it okay well you need you need to ha know this for this particular you know assessment um, that you're going to be taking so there's a lot of different ways to think about a system I don't want to turn this whole video into a um, lesson on it but basically generally a good way to think about it is a system this is a linear system because we're talking about linear equations ie line equations you have two lines if you will okay line one and line two and the solution to a system is where those two lines uh, intersect, okay, the coordinate. So here we have line one and here we have line two. The point, the x, y point, the coordinate where those two lines intersect is the solution to the system. Now, um, systems are a huge topic in algebra, so I'm uh, not going to get into much more than this. But you can see that, hey, I have two lines, you know, you don't necessarily have to have a specific uh, solution. You could have two parallel lines, right? And if your lines are parallel, you're not going to have um, a solution. There is no solution, or you can have infinitely many solutions, et cetera, et cetera. So this um, problem, this is a real basic, super easy uh, problem uh, that you know you should be able to handle for this particular assessment. Now, if you... Um, you know, struggle with it a little bit or, for, you know, you forgot a little bit shaky, that's a good indication that, hey, you need to step up your review, you know, uh, so plan accordingly. But let's get into the actually how we can solve this. Now, um, what paths can you take to solve systems of equations? So actually, there's quite a few, but some are more advanced than the Algebra 1 level. So generally, there are what? There is the graphing method, 
Okay, graphing, then there's the substitution method, and then there is the elimination or the linear combination method. Okay, now the graphing method is where you graph two lines on a, on a piece of graph paper and you actually look to see where the two lines cross. You find the coordinate. That's not a practical um, you know, method for this particular problem. So, but obviously this is stuff that you're going to be teaching, okay? So just need to know it. So the substitution and the elimination method are the, uh, really the, the, one, the methods that you're going to be teaching that you're going to have your students, you know, to be able to do this. So what I'm going to use here is the substitution method because there's a nice opportunity. I already have y is equal to 2, 2x, okay? So I can substitute this y here in with this material, okay? So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to take that second equation, 3x plus 4. Now I know y is already equal to 2x, so I'll put that 2x right here, and that is going to be equal to 12. So now I'm going to have one equation and one variable, so let's solve it. 3x plus 8x is equal to 12, and I'm going to get 11x is equal to 12. And you're like, oh boy, we're dealing with fractions. Uh, what's the big deal? You're a math teacher. You can handle it, right? So we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by 11, and x is going to be equal to 12 over 11. So in our, you know, visually, what we're looking at, we're looking for this coordinate where these two lines cross. We have the x value, okay, already. So that's 12 over 11, okay? Now, of course, you know, I'm, you know, I know I'm talking to a professional here, and I know you're, you know, um, hardworking, and you or you wouldn't be taking this test if you didn't have all the characteristics of a professional, educated, worked hard, etc. So, um, uh, but your students now, okay, <laughs> how you teach your students, they're not going to like dealing with fractions. They're going to want nice little integer values and whatnot. So you have to be comfortable with fractions for your students to be comfortable for them. Okay, so we have uh, x is equal to uh, 12 over 11. And let's go ahead now and solve for y. Okay, and now we have this beautiful little equation we can use over here. So we know y is equal to 2x. So I can just simply plug in this uh, value right here, right? Because I know what x is equal to, so I can replace this x. So that's going to be 2 times 12 over 11. And I get what? 24 over 11. Okay, so 24 over 11 and that's it and you don't um, you don't need to turn your your uh, fractions your improper fractions into mixed numbers but again if I am if I'm telling you things you already know because you already may have a math background uh, probably a lot of you already do and that's excellent but remember just because you know calculus and differential equations and advanced linear algebra that you know you're 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 way over here okay you're like what your mindset and the way you're thinking is way over here you got to bring it way down to people you know and uh, for um, you know children young students are going to be like 10 to like 14 years old and it really it's about your communication of these concepts okay just because you know advanced math does not mean that you're going to be a great math teacher it takes time to develop into it. However, the first step is to be, you know, knowledgeable, highly knowledgeable of the subject, and then, you know, um, you know, start, you know, all the other things that make a great teacher. I can tell you right now, um, myself, just like every other teacher, when you get into these uh, careers, you need to. Um, it's tough being a first year teacher if this is where you're going into. If you're going to be a first year teacher or a young teacher, you want to get with those veteran teachers that can help you, you know, with the classroom management and the lesson planning and all of that because there's a lot more uh, into teaching math and just knowing math, uh, etc. So I don't want to go ahead and belabor this but um, video more than what it needs to be. But I'm glad that you uh, found me and I definitely want to help you. So if you if you like my teaching style, I definitely have a, a really comprehensive uh, course uh, for the uh, GACE uh, middle level um, mathematics assessment. Again, I'll leave the link in the description of this video. I literally have hundreds of um, uh, videos on YouTube. I'm posting all the time, so hopefully you'll become a subscriber. And many of these videos are definitely going to help you out um, as well. 
If you like this video, I would definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. How are uh, things going uh, for you and, you know, in terms of your certification? Uh, why did you go for, why are you teaching middle school? Or is it that you don't have the certification or the education background for high school? Um, I've taught both middle school and high school. They both have their, their rewards. They are different. Um, but um, anyways, I want to hear from you. So, because your feedback lets me know how I'm doing, and also your questions and etc., let me, um, you know, gives me ideas for future videos that can help you out. But with that being said, I definitely appreciate appreciate your time, and I wish you all the best on this assessment. You know, as a parent myself, you know, we need to have the best people in the classroom, and you know, you're one of those unique uh, uh, people out there. I want to congratulate you on this that have chosen teaching as a career right uh, not everyone can do it <laughs> but believe me it's like I was in a Marine Corps right not everyone can be a Marine and not everyone can be a teacher all right it's a it's it's a it's a uh, it's not it's challenging okay but uh, unfortunately a lot of people out there think it's easy but but uh, it's challenging however it is extremely rewarding so go for it thank you for your time I wish you all the best and have a great day